welcome you all to this uh, course on diffraction and imaging. Okay. In the last class, uh, we discussed okay, how a wall sphere can be used okay, uh, uh, to find out what all reflections which will appear okay, in the diffraction pattern and also how uh, a wall, the construction of the wall sphere has been used okay, to construct different types of uh, diffractometers. Okay. Then we also started talking about uh, how to find out the intensity of the uh, spot in the diffraction. What all factors will decide the intensity of the spots first? Orientation. Orientation. Other than that, what is the most important thing? Scattering angle. Other than that, majority of oriented planes. The problem is that the planes we do not talk about the atoms. Okay. It is essentially like this. How many atoms are going to? diffract correct that is essentially we have if the beam falls on n number of atoms okay all of them contribute to intensity in each k direction am i right is it not that is if we have a sample if we keep it and an electromagnetic radiation is falling onto the sample. Okay, this is the incident beam direction K0 if you take. You take in this direction K. Okay. This we define a separate uh, different vectors because though the magnitude remains that same, angle is different. So then they are distinct vectors. Okay. So if we put a detector here and try to find out what is going to be the intensity. The first thing which the intensity depends on is that each of them are contributing to it. So the intensity is nothing but amplitude squared, right? So amplitude from each of the wave which is coming, the vectorial sum is taken. That sum could all add up or that sum could some cases be different that will decide the net amplitude of the intensity. If all add up, then we say that a constructive interference has taken place, correct? And maximum intensity is observed. In between regions, intensity will be different, is it right? So essentially, the intensity of the diffracted spot or the amplitude of the diffracted spot first depends upon the number of atoms which are diffracting. Then, what is the phase relationship with which this diffraction takes place? Okay, that is one also which will come into the picture to decide. Okay, what is going to be the overall intensity? So, what is the uh, way we can write the scattered wave? then an amplitude a dash was there this is sigma a dash is because if each atom the scattering amplitude could be different that is why we are taking that sort of a term correct. What does this r depend on now? This r is essentially the position of each of the atom which we are considering it. Suppose we assume that the lattice is something like a primitive lattice. Okay. Then each point represents okay, position of that what is going to be the scattering from the unit cell we can take it to be that value scattering from this point correct. Okay. Then suppose the unit cell itself okay, is non primitive. Okay. Then we can consider it in two ways. We can assume that the though the point represents a primitive lattice, okay, each corresponding to each of this uh, 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 point, okay. Other than that, there has to be some more position which should be there in the unit cell in the case of a non-primitive lattice, correct? This can be dealt with in a different way also. What we can tell is that. It is a primitive lattice, okay. 
in that the basis per lattice point could be one for primitive could be more for others correct that way if we consider a bcc itself we can consider it as a simple cubic lattice with two basis uh, uh, that is two atoms per lattice point but only the position where they are coming will be fixed in space that's what essentially it is that way also we can consider that way okay so essentially what will happen is that this vector r which we decide will be one is the lattice vector plus the vector which corresponds to a basis which are occupying different positions in the lattice plus this is suppose there is going to be a deviation from the uh, exact position because there is uh, some defect is present so atom is not at the correct position then that deviation will be represented by this vector okay let us assume the case where it's a perfect uh, crystal then this factor will turn out to be zero correct so only these two terms have to be taken then if we substitute for r r u is essentially the position of the base uh, uh, basis vector okay vectors in the lattice okay then what will happen to be the side there will be two this will be essentially how it will turn out to be correct and then this can be uh, returned in terms into two summation correct one corresponding to the lattice position another corresponding to the basis uh, atoms which are there around each of the lattice point uh, correct okay. and uh, so this factor is essentially nothing but since we are considering it as a primitive lattice okay each lattice has got only that is each unit cell has got only one lattice point corresponding to it this summation is essentially going to give okay the sum of scattering amplitude from okay each of the uh, lattice points okay so if the beam is falling on how many number of lattice points it's going to fall then that summation gives so this is what we call it as the shape factor correct and this factor is what we call it as the corresponding to atoms which are there within the unit cell or the number of atoms which are there around each lattice point okay okay this is what we normally call it as the structure factor correct so these two together is going to decide the intensity of each of the diffraction spot and in this derivation essential assumption or the main assumption which you have made is that the wave which is coming is being scattered by one lattice point the wave which is scattered before it reaches the detector we don't assume that it is being scattered again okay so when such an assumption is being made okay this type of scattering the theory which is developed is called as the kinematical theory of diffraction okay most of the x-ray diffraction it is assumed that it is only one scattering event which is taking place okay there are some conditions where even in x-ray multiple diffraction do multiple scattering do takes place for which the dynamical theory was derived in fact that extension of that what is being used in the electron microscopy the other one which we have to consider it is that uh, 
since it is a primitive uh, each atom uh, that is each lattice point represents okay uh, one unit cell okay and then if we consider that is a summation which is going to shape factor that we will deal with later let us look at the structure factor okay <coughs> suppose the sample contains okay it's a primitive lattice only one atom per unit cell then each atom is going to be at the origin correct the atom is going to be only at the origin of the unit cell okay then what will happen to that is this f of k are you correct if it contains one atom per unit cell r u will turn out to be 0 0 0 correct otherwise what will be the value it can be any general vector which we can take this r u will be equal to h u plus k v no u into a plus v into b plus w into c that is what r u if we consider a diffraction is taking place in a particular direction the diffraction vector we represented with h k l so this vector delta k essentially can be written as h into a star plus k into b star plus l into c star so if we substitute this will turn out to be k v plus l w this is what this equation will turn out to be correct if it contains uh, it is a primitive lattice okay the lattice point is at the origin that u v w will turn out to be 0 0 so this factor will all turn out to be only 1 suppose n, n lattice points are there in that sample okay then what is going to be the total intensity of uh, the total scattered amplitude okay that will be equal to because s of delta k right for the primitive lattice if n atoms are going to be there this number is n n into 1 okay that is what it's going to be the amplitude okay the psi size starts is where the intensity is that will turn out to be n squared if it is 1 and only thing which we have to consider here is that by into that amplitude this a star will also come into the picture this amplitude part I said that we will come back uh, later suppose we assume that the lattice contains hmm, okay it is a BCC lattice okay BCC can be considered as a simple cubic lattice with two atoms per uh, uh, each lattice point okay and the position at which the atoms will appear r1 will be r u1 v1 is at 0 0 0 another r u2 will be half 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 correct with respect to a unit cell this is the position at which it is going to come okay then if we substitute for this here in this what it will turn out to be then f of delta k will turn out to be one is a dash plus another is a dash into exponential 2 pi a h plus k plus l by 2 okay this is what it is going to turn out correct this is going to be the sc scattering from each of the lattice point okay 
this multiplied by the number of uh, lattice points which are there, which are contributing to a, a, a the intensity of the diffracted spot, then we can find out the total amplitude and the intensity we can get that information. This automatically tells us what is the selection rule for uh, uh, visibility or invisibility of the diffraction spots. Here what it has to be H plus K plus L by 2 has to be H plus K plus L has to be an even number correct. If it is even then it is always going to be the max intensity maximum will be there when it is odd okay you get uh, minus okay. Then since the scattering intensity because we are considering 2 uh, atoms per uh, unit cell okay and they are of the same type okay since we are considering the BCC as a crystal okay. This scattering amplitude is going to be the same okay. So, it turns out to be 0 correct. What one should remember here is that with respect to a unit cell we have considered the position of these atoms correct. Okay. So, essentially we have all the diffraction spots whatever we do all these calculations are valid for the lattice okay. Either one atom can be there here and then another atom can be here at the center that is what this condition is. Suppose I keep the position of the atom this position is shifted by some distance some vector delta r then this atom will also be shifted by the vector delta r. The position of atom in the unit cell is not unique even if we tilt the shift the atom position the intensity of the diffractor spot is not going to change not the position where they are going to come. What will essentially happen is that suppose this delta r turns out to be okay write a into a b into b plus c into c where a b c are some constants okay. So, by which all the atom positions are shifted. Now, what will happen to this expression when we write it substitute it then similarly this will become delta r will become what it will become a plus half into a correct plus b plus half into b plus c plus half into c correct this is what it will turn out to be. So, finally, if we substitute this f of delta f dash of delta k this is for the new position will turn out to be exponential of 2 pi a okay a into h l into c into it will turn out to be a dash plus a dash into exponential 2 pi a h plus k plus l by 2 okay this is how this expression will turn out to be this you can substitute and see that okay. This is only a phase factor intensity when we write it we write f dash star into f dash okay. Then this factor will turn out to be 1 right then it will turn out to be nothing but f star delta k. df of delta k this is the way it will turn out to be that means that the diffraction intensity is not really dependent upon what is exactly the position at which the atom is placed in the lattice is it clear only thing is that the atom is all displaced by the same amount each of the position because the relative distance has to be kept that same then the intensity just does not matter because whatever we get it in uh, intensity is corresponding to the lattice is what we are getting it the lattice point. The basis the contribution of the basis is essentially to the intensity and that does not change by changing the position of the atom like this. Now, FCC can be considered as a simple cubic lattice with uh, 4 basis atoms correct. Similarly, diamond can be considered 
as a simple cubic lattice with uh, 8 basis atoms. Only thing is that the position of the basis atoms which we fix it is corresponding to the lattice position of the position in the FCC. That way also we can consider. Similarly, diamond cubic can also be considered as an FCC and with respect to that with 2 atom positions for each of the lattice point of FCC lattice point that way also we can consider it. Using these uh, uh, concepts one can calculate the amplitude of the uh, diffracted spot from the unit, uh, unit cell. Now, I would expect you to do this as an exercise and work out and check for yourself. Okay. And normally what we see in the diffraction pattern is not the amplitude but the intensity. right? So, when we try to find out the selection rules derive the formula for the intensity okay, and then try to find out what are the conditions under which it will be present or absent. That way I would expect you to do that. That is uh, for various uh, structures okay. that is uh, different uh, you, you can consider lattices with uh, either you can consider different Bravais lattice with one atom per unit cell okay. or it can be considered as uh, primitive lattice with some number of basis atoms corresponding to each of the lattice point. Okay. Whichever way you want you can consider it. But when you find out the selection rules or the intensity which you wanted to find out, okay, it has to be done taking psi that is uh, ff star that way you try to find out. That way one can find out what all the factors which it is going to be. Okay. If you apply that condition what it will happen for a primitive lattice there is no extinction condition correct that is all the diffraction spots are going to be visible. It does not matter whether it is a triclinic lattice or whether it is an orthorhombic all the uh, planes will give rise to diffraction. Then if it is a A centered or B centered or C centered okay, depend if suppose it is an A centered lattice okay, the orthorhombic A centered. So, the positions of the basis vectors will be 0, 0, 0, 0, half, half. Then with respect to this the systematic absences will be seen when k plus l is equal to 2n plus 1 where n is an integer. Okay. I would expect all of you to derive all this because only the final expression is being given then you will understand it much better. Okay. Similarly like FCC when we do it we get the condition whether HKL are all odd or even. Okay. Similarly for hexagonal axis if you use for rhombohedral system then we get uh, the condition that uh, minus h plus k plus l equals 3n plus 1. These various conditions this is just using this formula okay, okay. choosing the uh, basis vectors for the different atom positions okay, and then trying to uh, find out what are the conditions under which the intensity will add up what are the conditions under which the intensity will be okay, become 0. This happens because uh, all atoms we assume to be the same type of an atom, but suppose there is glide and screw axis which is present. Okay. Let us consider the glide, what does the glide mean? That is in between the point there is one more in, in intermediate position where there is an atoms are there. Right. So, in that direction where we consider as the glide essentially it is half the distance some plane is going to be there and what will be the effect of any position initially it was not there. If at half position if it comes what it will happen the condition which will happen with respect to that the reflection corresponding to all the even odd ones will not be present in that direction only even reflections will be present. You consider a simple cubic lattice simple cubic lattice that is 1 0 0 plane is the one which gives rise to a fundamental reflection correct. There is no absence is there. In between if I put an atom at the middle 
then it becomes body centered. Then what is going to be the uh, separation between the planes? Now it becomes 2 0 0. That is the one which gives rise to a diffraction. The other one which is uh, uh, distance which is going to be exactly half of that, that interferes with it and the intensity of 1 0 0 becomes 0 correct. 1 0 0 reflection is not permitted in BC simple cubic uh, uh, no BCC as well as FCC. Similar to that here also initially from here to here is the lattice translation vector. So, these are all the planes which are giving rise to diffraction. Now, because we have a glide along this one there is a row of atoms are coming in this particular plane. The effect of that is what is going to be is that if it is in the direction a direction. So, h will represent the diffraction plane index corresponding to that correct and h should be equal to 2 n okay. That is what essentially. So, the systematic absences you will have a differences which will come here. That is what the for the glide which it is going to be there. The presence and absence you will find that 2 n plus 1 is absent the 2 n when you take it it will be present okay. That is 2 0 0 reflection will be there 1 0 0 will be absent 3 0 0 reflection will be there okay. This is for absent for H k 0 you know why uh, this time H k 0 we consider it okay. How do you represent a, a, a position of uh, atoms in the unit cell for a mirror? Suppose it is uh, x y z okay. The mirror plane is along uh, assume that uh, uh, 0 0 1 if the mirror is there or the glide plane is there. Glide is along uh, 0 0 1 if you take it then what will happen? So, if the glide then this is first x y z plus half from any position it will be brought to this position correct. Then the reflection will be taken of uh, this one. So, this will turn out to be minus x y z plus half. This is going to be the position of one of the atoms, correct? Is it not? Okay. So, the two positions are going to be there. If we substitute for this, the same expression, we will be getting this sort of reflection. Similarly, okay, let us like if it is a diagonal glide it is going to be there then h plus k it will turn out to be if it is going to be a diamond glide then it is going to be h plus k equal 4 and plus 2. These sort of uh, this one only the table which is being given I would expect you to work out all these things and check this table whether it is correct or not then you will understand also how it comes okay because there is no point in spending time and deriving all this. Okay. What will happen in the case of a screw also? Suppose we say that there is a uh, three fold screw okay, along C axis. That means that initially with respect to this axis an atom was here okay, that is maybe three atoms here maybe some three atoms are there three fold symmetry okay. Now <coughs> atoms are not in this plane and in this plane now one in this plane another at one third of the distance another at one third of the distance correct then at uh, uh, full distance one let us find it comes. Similarly like this along all these axis it is going to be there. So essentially if you look in that direction we have two more planes which have come in between correct. So, now what is going to happen is that initially this 1 0 0 plane which was responsible for it with respect to this now the closest distance is going to be one third of that okay. So, 3 0 0 planes are the ones okay which are going to be the planes which are present okay others are going to be absent okay that is what essentially is given with this condition that is with respect to if it is 2 1 l is equal to here 3 1 and 3 2 
L is not equal to 3 n this absent okay. And these conditions are exactly the same way they are using the symmetric condition we can derive okay what all the reflections which will be absent. So, what you can make out from this that is almost all the symmetry elements which we are considering okay what will be the effect on the diffraction pattern okay that is given by these relations okay. Indexing a pattern we can get some information about with respect to a lattice okay what all the types of groups to which it can uh, this uh, crystals can belong but we can't get information about exact atom positions because the phase of the atom position is lost when they when we take the intensity of the diffracted spot okay is it not whether the crystal contains a two fold rotation uh, two fold screw okay or uh, uh, four one screw all these uh, types of screw axis whether they are present or not that information is contained in the diffraction pattern itself okay. is this clear. So, regarding screw we have regarding glide also we have that information then regarding the bay uh, atom positions in the lattice okay which positions they are occupying we are getting uh, conditions okay for the presence or absence of uh, uh, diffraction spots for various types of Bravais lattices correct. These are all the information which is available okay from this uh, structure factor calculation is this clear okay. So, when we have to find out the intensity the total intensity as part it depends upon the delta k and we have to take f of delta k we have now just considered f of delta k how it is going to uh, the depending upon the type of uh, crystal structure how f of delta k gets affected s of delta k depends upon how many atoms are going to be there correct. Here what is the expression for this? The expression for this is correct. This is the expression to find out the total amplitude of the scattered wave from each of the individual lattice position how do we define this this definition we define it as correct this is how we define that vector r at each of the lattice point right delta k we can define as this way we can define it is it not what it will happen this is the sort of an expression which will turn out here m and p is written I think I had taken l m p. So, this can be written essentially in this form because since it is an exponential function. So, essentially summation corresponding to one corresponding to this one product of three terms one in the x direction one in the y direction and another in the z direction the summation is over in that particular direction with respect to delta k x okay. The atom position from m equals 0 to n x minus 1 that is essentially from n x atom positions are there correct. Similarly, on the other direction because we are choosing a Cartesian coordinate okay. If any one of this term if we take it how we can write this this is 1 minus i into e to the power of 2 pi delta k x this if we take it within bracket the whole to power of m we can write it right 
this is nothing but if I put this as r, this sigma is 1 r to the power of m. This summation will turn out to be 1 plus r plus this is how we can write it. This is a geometrical series. So what is the sum of a geometrical series? 1 minus r to the power of n. Okay. This is what this value will turn out to be for each of them. Okay. This is just the mathematics. So finally if we substitute S star we will be getting a term like this. This is essentially two sign terms are there because th this is the intensity which we are considering it. is what it turns out to be. How will this function look like if you try to plot it? This is when delta k into a equals no pi has to be there okay is equal to 1 what will happen to this term? This will become 0 correct but at the same time this also will become 0 okay when such uh, similar functions that L hospital rule you remember that with which we try to find out that has to be applied. <laughs> then what will happen is that S star S will turn out to be N squared okay. This part of it you can whatever the differentiation which you have studied earlier okay, part of that that you have to apply and you will get this. This is corresponding to at delta k equals 0. Correct. So there are two conditions which are coming. Suppose delta k into a into n equals one. Then what happens? Then also this function will become zero. Okay. But this may not become zero. Okay. So there are many secondary maxima. So one maxima that is corresponding to this becomes zero means that first zero comes as delta k equals zero. Okay. If you try to plot it maximum is n squared it happens and where is the first minimum comes for delta k equal to 1 by a into n where n is the number of atoms in that direction okay. So if this is the delta k which we are trying to plot it okay so here so for a delta k value which is corresponding to 1 by a n okay the intensity will drop down to 0 correct or this delta k value at which this side also you will be getting it right. So if you look at this width that gives information about the number of atoms in a particular direction which is contributing to diffraction right. If the number is going to be infinite in all the directions okay then this will turn out to be almost like a point here the delta k value will become smaller and smaller is it not that means that the number of atoms in a row can be equivalent to number of planes which are perpendicular to that also you can take that to be. So depending upon how many planes which are going to scatter contribute to scattering the intensity more the number of planes the intensity of the diffracted spots become uh, the width becomes smaller and smaller it becomes very sharper okay. If it contains only two spots which are going to be there then what will happen if, no if it contains only two planes then what will happen it is only that it is like a sign function that is one between the first uh, order diffraction and the second order diffraction the intensity will be continuously dropping down in between it will become zero and then it will go to a maximum. The separation between the peaks will not come. Normally in the X-ray diffraction peak when you get it okay the first order diffraction to the second order diffraction if you look at it the peak width is very small na? and you have studied that using the peak width or the full width at half maximum which you measure it that is also another measure of uh, the peak width that you can talk about the size of the grain. This is the reason why in a diffraction spot when more 
uh, parts which are arranged in a periodic way lattice points which are arranged in periodic way they give rise to they contribute to diffraction okay then we get peaks at only some specific position and in between positions there are some intensities are there but that intensity is too small compared to the peak height that we are not able to see it okay so this is the general condition which we can derive to find out when the maxima will take place when the minima will take place that is essentially depends upon what is the value of n because this gives the condition for minimum of the peak right the intensity becoming zero the intensity becoming maximum intermediate peaks what it will happen 1 by 2 into an correct if this value becomes if we substitute then this term will turn out to be pi finally it will turn out to be pi by 2 correct then the maximum intensity will come so that is what is shown here for various peaks that is the reason why we call this term as a shape factor okay because depending upon how many uh, uh, how many atoms in each of the direction contribute to diffraction okay the width of the diffraction peak in that direction depends on that okay and another important information comes is that though the maximum of the intensity we get it at corresponding to delta k equals 1 by a or delta k equals 0 or multiples of delta k the delta k equals n by a you can write it okay. for that value you will be getting that all peak positions for delta k values away from it also there is some intensity some contribution to intensity right is it not it is not that only at the exact g value you are getting the intensity see this will correspond to a position which is on zero okay another it may come somewhere like this a position will come but away from this particular value this will come first one by a away from this also up to a particular width you are getting some intensity so that is the effect of finite size of the sample which is diffracting what will be the other way also this can be considered okay here we have written suppose we wanted to represent this deviation from the exact delta k value uh, this value when it corresponds to zero or corresponds to this value this is what we call it as a reciprocal lattice vector right and some deviation from the reciprocal lattice vector also we get it so that's what we write it as a general delta k so this delta k can be represented as g minus yes we can write it s is the deviation from the exact bracket position that way we can do it so if we substitute this value okay here then this will turn out to be exponential 2 pi a okay g dot rlmp into s dot rlmp will come correct this term is going to be one okay now this term is going to be s of delta k is going to depend upon summation over rlmp over this term correct what is s s is deviation from the black position that can also be in a vector notation we can write it s equals i into sx plus j into sy plus k into ssz okay if we write like that then what will happen is that this expression is there na all the delta kx will be replaced by sx this will be replaced by sy this will be replaced by ssz that's what it will turn out that you can derive that part of it now when you expand this okay this term will turn out to be sin squared i'll write for a x okay sin squared pi ssx into a into n 
x divided by sin squared pi s x into a this you look at these two these two are similar correct exactly that is what it is going to turn out to be ok. So, this can be expressed in terms of how much is the deviation from the Bragg angle up to which we are able to see some intensity in the diffraction spot correct where is the first minimum occurs for what deviation ok that way also we can represent it the width correct. Yeah, exactly. So, but beyond which also we should get some intensity. Which one? Beyond one by n also we can write and we will get some intensity. No intensity. How we yes. will be getting it is essentially here. This is what essentially one. This is one by a, correct? And then two by a, one two by a. It will come like this. It will go in this direction, correct? Periodicity. Then you will be getting some intensity maxima corresponding to a by n right then corresponding to in between then 1 by a by n 2 by a by n like that it will come then some particular value of n by a by n will turn out to be this peak height ok. In between middle position corresponding to a value of uh, equal to 1 by twice a by n you will be getting the maximum intensities ok. That maximum of intensity also if we try to look at it ok that intensity also will be changing it will be decreasing with ok. How we can look at it is is that here if you see that how does it fluctuate between maxima and minima for a very large value correct compared to this here it is going to be a slowly varying function. Which one? Upper one will vary every one by a. Yeah, Lower here. One will vary one by a. Okay, so this can be approximated to essentially a function like delta psi equals one by pi delta k into a the whole square. This sort of approximation can be done. It's a slowly varying function. Sine can be approximated to theta, k theta. That sort of a thing will come compared to the upper one. So, this intensity S star S can be written as something like delta epsilon into sin squared pi delta k into a into n it will turn out to be. This is what it can be used to find out how the intensity is going to vary. So, delta epsilon is 1 by pi delta k. Yeah that is comes down sharply compared to this one compared to this is a slowly, slowly varying function. So, this can be approximated to that is ok 1 by it will turn out to be pi delta k into a the whole square ok. This is what you call it as in the mathematics as an envelope function no that does not matter essentially what is going to happen is that suppose you have some one that is a peak is there in between you can have many peaks like this it is be there these are all the fine peaks it is a overall intensity which comes this function you call it as n because that is a slowly but that is also maybe a sine function but the rate at which that is varying is going to be different. Now essentially what is important here is that intensity or the width of the diffraction spot if you look at it that depends upon the dimension of the sample which is contributing to diffraction that is the effect of it is here for a crystal with one direction it is uh, 12 atoms ok and then another direction 6 atoms are there this is how the peaks will look like in both these directions the intensity which is calculated which is being given ok. The direction in which the number of atoms have increased you can see that the height of this subsidiary peaks have come down and here the subsidiary peaks are still prominent when it is going to be there ok. What will be the effect of this? The effect is that normally we assume that from an infinite the sample having infinite dimension when diffraction takes place we should get a spot pattern correct it should be a dot 
which you should get it. But when the sample has got finite dimension okay the reciprocal around each reciprocal point we have an intensity distribution in k space is taking place. Not only the intensity reaching maximum that is what is being shown here okay, this point and the other regions also there is an intensity distribution. This is in a TM sample when we take it what is the thickness of the sample? The thickness of the sample essentially is very small of the order of 100 nanometers or less and the other two perpendicular directions its thickness is very large. Because of that what is going to happen is that in the reciprocal lattice uh, space along the z direction there is going to be a streaking of the diffraction spots. So, we will have intensity spots like this in the reciprocal lattice okay. whereas in these two directions x and y directions the streaking is not much. what will be the consequence of this? When you draw the evolved sphere, evolved spheres cut some of this. So, that is why you always get some intensity ok. That does not happen in x-ray diffraction when the it is a large size of the sample ok. More diffraction spots comes because of this reason. Is this clear ok? And it has a consequence also in the the way the diffraction spots appear for different types of precipitate. Suppose we have a second phase particle which are embedded in the sample ok. So, each of them has got a finite dimension ok. It contributes to the scattering. So, in the super lattice reflections corresponding to that second phase particle ok. The shape of the spot is determined by the shape of the precipitate itself. So, whichever direction it has got a less width in that direction the spread is going to be more in the diffraction spot right. So, here if you see this this is a diffraction spot which is which you are seeing it there is a streaking which is there in this direction ok. This is the precipitates from which this diffraction spot has come. So, this direction if you look at it this perpendicular direction width is less and that is where the streaking is more. In this direction its uh, length is large and you look at this the streaking is less. So, just by looking at the diffraction spot itself what the shape which it has you can tell this is what the shape or the morphology which the second phase particle has. Just looking at the diffraction itself you do not have to go to an image. So, here what is being shown is that what are the morphology different types of morphology of the precipitate what will be the size of the spot in reciprocal space ok. This is essentially for a cube ok these are rel, these are called as rel rods ok this come and it is for a sphere this is the way it will appear first second subsidiary maxima that is what is being shown. If it is a thin disc you can see like this when you have a rod which is there like this this is the way it will appear this is the type of shapes which they exhibit this can be observed in the reciprocal. Because of that you take a striking fault. Striking fault is uh, what is the dimension which a striking fault will have? What is the width of the striking fault? Mostly one atomic layer. What about the length can be large in both the dimensions right. So, when the width is small whenever striking faults appear if you take a diffraction pattern from a region which contains a striking fault perpendicular to a fault you will be getting a line which is a streak which will be observed. Similarly like GP zones when they form in aluminum that is nothing but a one plane where a segregation of uh, copper or silver which takes place in that particular plane ok. Perpendicular to that you will be a, so there in the diffraction pattern which you get it in the uh, TEM you will be observed that there will be some streak which will be passing through this that depends on ok that is what you will be observed ok. That is because that depends upon what is the direction in which they are there Th this streak tells us that 
the habit plane of them is 100 type okay. that will come to later. So essentially looking at the shape of the diffraction spot okay, that is what I am coming to that we can get uh, information about the morphology of the precipitate. This is exactly the same information you are doing it in X-ray diffraction also there is no way it is different. Okay. They are also when you tell that when the uh, grain size is very small okay, you can find out from looking at the broadening of the peak this is exactly that same. There what is going to happen is that various uh, corresponding to various uh, uh, orientations all of them merge together correct because in a TEM when we say 1 on 1 reflection we have to be very specific whether it is 1 on 1 or 1 on bar 1 it is going to be it is totally distinct two directions they form that is not the way we get it in XRD. So we measure an average full width at half maximum and try to correlate it to the width of the grain. So the information which we can looking at that shape we can get information about the morphology and uh, then the intensity of each of the reflection okay it is not only the shape factor in addition to it the intensity contribution comes from the each of the atom which are going to sit at that particular position okay and the atomic scattering factor which this a dash which we have represented is just depends upon it is actually minus 1 e into k dot r it will turn out to be a delta k dot r I should write it okay. This is what it uh, that we will come to later in the next few classes we will come back to how this atomic scattering intensity comes for x-ray, electron, neutron all these things we will discuss about it okay. What we will do is we will stop here now.